This video is the second part of a series describing the complex nature of role-playing game design. I'll be focusing on setting and its associated fluff, uh, but I'd like to start with off with an addendum covering my last video, Rules, where games which claim to have no setting, uh, like Genesis or Universalis, uh, GURPS, Microscope, are also in those that range, and I hate it when games do that. Uh, just like stories, you can run any setting, but the rules tend to support certain settings better than others. Can you imagine running Happy Birthday Robot using the Genesis uh, system? More on that, those later in the video. So, at the opposite end of things, uh, licensed games. Well, they have built-in settings. Uh, Mouse Garden is, again, is an example of that. And it's a good example because this doesn't assume that you know everything about the setting. So it has a lot of notes on the setting and it's very well designed. So, Setting is usually thought of as a collection of people, places, and things. Uh, but I prefer to think of it as a plot that generates the setting. The overall plot of Dungeons & Dragons is fairly simple. Um, you become powerful by defeating monsters and collecting treasure, thereby becoming more powerful, defeating bigger monsters, collecting more treasure, this is why the monster lists are so extensive. It's got an entire book, and the, even in this, the first edition. Um, because of that simplicity, the defeating of monsters is often posed as a quest uh, given by uh, some authority figure or another, uh, usually accomplished by defeating a number of enemies slash monsters because monsters are usually outside of the social hierarchy um, players don't usually think to overturn it not so with Genesis systems Android setting um, instead of monsters the characters are fighting mega corporations Android presents the same mega corporations as different methods to the same end, making money. It doesn't assign them stats because they share the same capitalist ideology. So, uh, the capitalist ideology is also pushed by the equipment section, which I will show you now. And. So the solution is actually to follow a different ideology, but this isn't supported by the game. It, it's implied that it's supported by the game, but it's not supported by the game. So instead, usually the player characters just try to foil whatever corporate plan there is. In contrast, Happy Birthday Robot doesn't have any foes. And it doesn't work well using any system that assumes their existence. It's like Genesis system. Instead, this game's challenge is to write a poem about Robot's birthday. The setting is usually about people coming to, together to celebrate. The challenge is in the writing, not in the story. As you can imagine, Happy Birthday Robot was designed for kids. I could go on for hours detailing all the different ways of presenting settings, but instead I want to explain fluff. Instead of suggesting stories, fluff actually tells stories. I explored similar phenomena with rules and examples in my previous video. Uh, like examples, fluff isn't strictly necessary, but it helps. Happy Birthday Robot has an entire chapter devoted to poems. Uh, examples of 
poems generated by the game. Now, that was actually uh, what are called Let's Plays, or pretty similar to Let's Plays, and I'd like to save that for another video. Um, but, despite them being unfashionable, Legend of the Five Rings does provide stories. Um, fiction in the rule books actually serve a purpose, which is to not only explain examples of who the, the players should play and who they should face off against, but also how the story should go. Um, this only happens if the story follows the rules, though. I'm looking at you, Dun Dungeons and Dragons, because that is uh, not how fights usually get carried out in the rules. So make sure that your story is written by someone who knows what is and is not possible. There's another form of fluff too. Can you guess what it is? I'm holding up this game to give you a clue. It only takes a glance to realize that Happy Birthday Robot has many characters all celebrating. These characters aren't in the rules of the game, but they are in the illustrations and illustrations are another form of fluff, telling the where, the who, and what actions are expected in the typical story. Illustrations need to be near the rules or setting they depict, which is why, unlike this in this first edition, monster manuals uh, had each and every monster illustrated. And to give an example here, I don't see an example of yellow mold or green slime. So that is very much a later edition thing. And while corporations are just ideas, oh, they're, they can have their headquarters depicted, but that's neither here nor there. I could go on for settings longer, but I'll leave it at that, along with adapting uh, other media to RPGs, but that's for another video. Anyways, that's what I've been thinking about lately. My next video will be about expanding the binary of rules and setting to include a third element, suggestions. Have yourself a great day, and Dewey.